Welcome back everyone with your 11 a.m. update on Hurricane Ian. Let's start with the satellite imagery because you can see as it's pulled off of the western tip of Cuba, the eye has really cleared out, indicating that any sort of weakening process that or disruption by Cuba is probably uh, being, you know, it's, it's arrested and now we can, it moves back over the waters, can probably resume its intensification process that had uh, started uh, prior to approaching the western tip of Cuba. And now we can actually see it starting come into to view on a long range radar. Here's the eye way down here. You can see it uh, coming into view now and you can see that it's well defined. It's not disrupted by the uh, land interaction. Um, but the, I think the thing that's most pressing to me on this image is now that you can see it on radar, you can see that we're really starting to lose time for people in the path of this system to take action. So the, when you can see it on radar, you know it's starting to get close. The other thing is you can see this large rain shield that is developing ahead of the system. That's going to contribute to the flood potential uh, that goes with the storm surge, but it's also going to contribute to making it harder to do these final preparations. If it's raining heavy and the roads are, you have some localized flooding. So take that into consideration if you're trying to make some last minute preparation. This rain shield will kind of sweep out ahead of it. Uh, we take a look at the latest forecast as of 11 a.m., um, 115 miles per hour. Still a category three movement to the north at 10 miles per hour. Starting to slow down a little bit, but we, we talked about that all week, that it would slow down as it approached the state of Florida, which contributes to why it's such a hazardous event. Generally move off to the north and north-northeast over the next day or so, then approaching this, the western coast of Florida on Wednesday evening, uh, making landfall somewhere within this red area which denotes the hurricane warning area. And then we have to start thinking about downstream impacts. And you can see uh, new watches and warnings uh, with, respect to the, uh, with respect to the East Coast. And they're moving their way up into Southeast Georgia and South Carolina. The blue tropical storm warnings, the yellow tropical storm watch. So just because uh, this thing is going to move over the peninsula, certainly don't let your guard down here over the Southeast. Um, oh, let's go back and look at the wind field. We had talked about this all week, that as it moved into the Gulf of Mexico, it would get bigger. You can see it playing out here. This orange area here denotes the size of the wind field. And look how large it's starting to get as it pulls into the Gulf of Mexico. And this is unfortunately bad news because bigger storms produce more storm surge. And we'll talk about that in a second. In terms of timing, uh, really things for southwest uh, Florida here, um, you, you got today, not to put too fine of a point on it, but you got today to make your final preparations. Then conditions starting to spread over central Florida on Wednesday, and then Thursday for southeast Georgia, and then Friday for the Carolinas. So we got a little time up here, so we're going to focus a little bit more over Florida. This is the damaging wind potential. I think this is an important graphic because I fear a lot of people uh, north of the track, especially you in Tampa, are going to say the track shifting south. I'm out of. The, I'm out of this. I'm out of this. No, absolutely, you're not. We're at the end of the rainy season here in Florida. It's going to be a lot of rain. You've got old trees up there, old growth trees. So when this damaging wind potential, this the winds with this system come ashore, if the soils are soaked, trees could come down, power lines could come down. Be really, really, really treacherous to move about when this system comes ashore. I mean, these numbers here, these are probabilities or the chance. You're looking at the chance of damaging winds uh, up in here, 80 to 90%. That's really, really high. So take that in consideration. Don't get enamored with the track and, and its recent shifts of late. I alluded to this both in the rainfall and a second ago. Look at when this rain comes ahead of it and then the actual hurricane comes ashore. Significant rain potential, again, at the end of the rainy season. So a lot of potential for flooding. And then when you have the winds of a hurricane come in there, a lot of potential for trees down, power outages. So really think about that. Think about are you ready to go without power for several days? So keep that in mind. Now, as we get closer to landfall, we're starting to, to um, hone in on the surge risk as well. And it's um, 
This little red area here, and if you've been watching, these numbers have come up over the last 24 hours, is really a big concern here for us. Uh, we're looking at this area from uh, middle of Longboat Key to Bonita Beach. So that includes uh, southwestern Florida, Charlotte Harbor area, uh, Fort Myers. Um, you really need to start thinking about what you're going to do the rest of the day. If evacuations are ordered, you need to heed them. Um, there's just not a lot of time to, to second guess it. So if you are ordered to evacuate, you need to go, go ahead and do so quickly. But then also look at the values are starting to come up here. And so I'll explain it really quickly if it's not intuitive. You know, the hurricane is the center of low pressure. There's high pressure up here. So as the hurricane sort of bangs into this, you get this really uh, long you know, easterly flow that will start to pile up the water in advance of the hurricane. So you know, don't, you here, don't think you're out of the woods either. These are some pretty significant surge values. Uh, for example, four to six feet from the mouth of the St. Mary's River to Altamaha Sound. So that's, we'll, we'll pick this out a little bit more in subsequent uh, briefings because now I really want, really want residents here in and around Charlotte Harbor to pay attention to this evolving surge risk. It's really, really important. Areas pretty much from uh, just north of Tampa all the way down under a surge warning. That means condition, da dangerous conditions are possible. But also note the new warning up here uh, in and around Jacksonville area, including the St. John's River, is now under a surge warning as well. So just because you're inland on St. John's River doesn't mean you're out of the surge. The water can actually go down the river. You know, we want to end again with the radar where we started. It's now, when you can see it on radar, it's getting close. So time is, is really ticking here. If you're in the path of this storm, especially if you've been ordered to evacuate, you really got to do so. I mean, we're, we're really concerned about this area in here uh, with the surge, but also the rain. You can see the rain sort of sweeping out in front of it. The heavy rain co-located with the storm surge could present a significant, significant flood risk. So please listen to you emergency management officials if they order you to leave please do so. That's it from the Hurricane Center. We'll be updating you as necessary and certainly every day at this time.